Hi, my name is Willem and I'm an engineering lead on the data science platform team at Gojek. I'm joined today by Alexei Muskalenko, who is my colleague, a senior engineer on the team. Today, we're going to be talking a bit about building a cloud native feature store with Feast. Today on the agenda, we're going to talk a bit about the data challenges that teams face when operationalizing machine learning. We're going to talk a bit about how Feast can help you with those challenges, what Feast is and what Feast is not. We're going to have a quick demo on Feast. Then we're going to talk about the project itself, where it's been and where it's going. And we have three big announcements that we're going to make, and I'm hoping you can stick around for those. So how does data science work at most teams today? Um, these projects are typically started because you want to target some kind of business outcome, some kind of metric that you want to push up. And a data scientist is often tasked with building the first model or the first proof of concept for this. So they're given data and they're asked to you know, build this model and see if it's actually viable. And so often the basis of the project, the, you know, the inception is the notebook. This is a linear end-to-end -end flow that a data scientist comes up with and you evolve that notebook into an end-to-end -end machine learning system. And so you have something that resembles what, what we have on the screen now. Um, on the left, you have your data sources, and then you have you know, transformations, let's say batch transformations, you have model training, you have model deployment, you have model serving, one end-to-end -end flow. And this often represents and resembles the notebook that it's being evolved from. And the final product there is a model that's integrated with the production system. And this works, and most teams can get to this point by just hacking together open source or proprietary solutions, products. Uh, at some point, somebody will say, we need real-time features and real-time data and hook up a stream. At some point, somebody will say, we need more distributed compute, so they hook up Spark. But ultimately, you're left with an end-to-end -end system, one monolith. But these monoliths come with some costs, sometimes very big costs. One of the first problems is that they're very slow to iterate on. If you have one team that needs to work on feature engineering, another needs to iterate on modeling, another that iterates on the you know, online serving and the production requirements, they all want to iterate at different frequencies and paces, and, and you know, there are different teams sitting in different places. But they have to work in unison because it's one monolithic system, and this slows them down. The second problem is that features often need to be redeveloped when going from training to serving. This is often because features are written in Python, and they, you know, they're not performant enough, and they need to be written in Java or Go. And there's all these reasons, but inconsistencies arrive when engineers and data scientists need to work together to produce one final output, one product. The third problem is that because of this, these you know, you know, rewrites and changes from one environment to the next, often you have training and serving inconsistencies in the data, and this can lead to a performance drop in your models. The fourth problem is that data quality problems arise when you, you don't know that uh, you don't have the proper monitoring in place, you don't have the proper metrics in place, you don't have validation of your data. Um, basically, the tools that are available today are not meant to measure data, uh, but at the same time, this data is affecting the business outcomes. Um, the prediction, the data that's going into the models affect the predictions that are made, and those that affect the outcome and the decisions that you make. And so finally, one of the biggest problems that we found at, you know, at Gojek and you know, many of the other teams have also told us is that there's just a gross lack of reuse of features. And yet feature engineering is one of the biggest costs that teams need to incur. And so these are kind of the five big problems that, are, that we've seen ML teams fa are faced with when it comes to operationalizing data. So we believe that a need exists for a battle-tested open source feature store to address these problems that we've highlighted. And we think Feast is that feature store. So Feast is a system that attempts to solve the key data challenges to production machine learning. So if we go back to that diagram I showed you earlier, typically what you'd have on the left is, you know, you'd have your data, you'd have your transformations, and then you'd have your model training, deployment, serving. This end-to-end -end flow would be duplicated for each project that you undertake. You'd not have reuse or very little reuse across projects. So how does Feast help with this kind of monolithic end-to-end -end architecture? Feast decouples this completely. So if we talk about the problems that we were um, highlighting earlier, the first one we were highlighting was the lack of iteration. So now you've decoupled engineering of features and creation of features because that process ends with Feast. That's one team that can be data engineers, data scientists. Then you have another team that's just purely iterating on model training. They're selecting features from Feast, training a model and shipping it to a registry. Then you have a third team. This can be a production team, engineers perhaps. They're shipping models into production. They're hooking those up into, um, you know, connecting them to real-time production systems. 
and you know they're looking up online features at low latency and they can do this confidently and at scale and with monitoring and instrumentation that it requires and all three teams can iterate independently and so this both solves iteration speed and also solves reuse because teams can now independently use each other's artifacts with their models or features in this, in this architecture so what does Feast provide? Feast provides a central, central registry. This registry is a catalog through which you can define your features and reuse them and collaborate on those across teams and across projects. Feast also does ingestion. So it has jobs that it provisions that loads data in from upstream sources, whether streaming or batch, into the stores in order for the third point, which is serving. Feast provides a point in time correct, a temporarily correct uh, serving layer that allows you to look up data at scale for training a model and it will handle the joins and everything you need and it also allows you to do online lookups so low latency lookups for for predictions in the online case it also provides you the monitoring tools to operate your system at scale in production the end-to-end -end flow um, is represented on the screen so on the left you have your data so these can just be notebooks data lakes data warehouse it doesn't really matter you push your data into feast and this is done through the triggering of an ingestion job and that job is a spark job and this job will write your data into the stores so in this case consistent copy of the data that you're ingesting into online and offline stores and the definitions of the features and the data that you're ingesting are handled by core so feast core is that central registry and then once you've ingested your data into the storage layer it's then available for all teams to use so if you know, one team wants to try out a feature that has been published and ingested into Feast. They can simply query it out of the Feast serving layer and then train a model. And so Feast for training uses an SDK and for online serving, it uses a low latency API. So what is Feast not? Feast is not a workflow scheduler. It's not like Luigi or Airflow, it doesn't do scheduling. It's not just a data lake or a data warehouse like BigQuery because it's got the online functionality as well, although it uses BigQuery and some of these tools underneath. Feast doesn't do transformation, so it's unlike Spark and Pandas, although it will utilize those tools. Um, but it's made, those are upstream tasks. Feast does some, have some discovery and cataloging functionality, but it's not meant to be a discovery or cataloging system. Um, Feast does not try and solve lineage of data or data version control. And Feast is not an ML or model serving or you know, model tracking or metadata tracking solution. Hi. I'm Alexi from Gojek and I want to show Feast in action. But before that, we need to deploy it. The primary way to deploy Feast is to roll out Docker images to Kubernetes using Helm. The only thing that needs to be done manually is to create in some secrets. So I already uh, connected to my Kubernetes cluster. So I will create a namespace And I will add secrets first for Postgres. You can see that I specified just a Postgres password here. And also our installation would need a Google service account key since we are using Google storage. So now we can run Helm install. So after you clone Feast repository, you can run Helm install using uh, some overrides, uh, overrides files that we keep in the repository. It takes some time to start all the containers, but when all ports are running, we can now connect to the Jupyter notebook. And now when we finished this deployment, let me briefly talk about uh, these components. First one is Feast Core. It's essentially a registry which stores specifications of features, collections of features, which we call feature table, and entities, which are 
keys and those feature tables. The next one is serving. Uh, it provides features uh, in real time and with low latency and mainly used by model serving for running real time prediction. This serving relies on the online feature storage, which we use Redis for. The JSON job here is mainly responsible for populating this online feature storage. It uh, pulls data from data warehouse or data lake, which we call batch source, or from Kafka or Kinesis, uh, some kind of streaming uh, source, which we call stream source. Uh, the historical retrieval is another job which mainly does similar job. Uh, it, it pulls data from data warehouse or data lake to prepare a data set for training. Uh, both those jobs aimed to provide consistency between data for training and data for survey. This is decay uh, kind of glues all this together. It, it used for creating features and feature tables, uh, for requesting features from the serving uh, to retrieve uh, uh, online features. It also can be used to uh, call historical retrieval or uh, manage your streaming ingestion or batch ingestion job. In this demo, I want to demonstrate how to use basic functionality of Feast. I will register uh, features in Feast Core. I will show you how to uh, retrieve uh, historical data set for training. And of course, how to use uh, Feast Serving to retrieve online features. Uh, also, we will cover uh, how to ingest data from batch and streaming source into our online feature storage. First, we need to instantiate Feast Client. It's essentially an entry point to all functions that are provided by Feast SDK. So we will configure it by uh, both parameters to the, the Feast Client constructor and environment variables. Now we can declare our features. For uh, this example, I will be using a driver trips dataset, which consists of features like average daily trips or conversion rate, and uh, also trips today. The interesting thing about those features is that some of them are updated daily, like average daily trips or conversion rate. Uh, and some of them, like trips today, are updated in real time. And despite the fact that they, all of the features are connected to the same key or entity driver ID, I created here two feature tables. Uh, that's because feature tables should be aligned to the source. And now it's a job of Feast to join features from different feature tables and uh, provide you uh, all features related to the same entity. So ingestion job here pulls data from the batch source and stores it into the feature storage. Another ingestion job consume the data from the streaming source and also uh, stores it to the feature storage. And serving basically pull all the features related to one uh, entity and it does it with a low latency because we store all features related to the same entity together in Redis. Now, important uh, fact here is that uh, populating both data warehouse and stream source is not part of responsibilities of Beast. 
So this relies on, uh, uh, on the fact that our customers uh, already have tools uh, for populating both uh, batch and streaming sources. So in addition to features uh, that I already showed, the feature table has also uh, two properties, batch source and stream source. Each feature tables is required to have batch source because uh, all feature tables should participate in uh, a training data set, but not all feature tables, not all features uh, are available uh, from the streaming source. In this specific example, we first uh, create feature tables with batch sources only. So we will be able to use them in preparing training data set. So we first uh, creating the entity, then we declaring feature table, uh, referring to this entity and adding all uh, features that are updated daily, specifying their types. And we also specify the source. It will be uh, a directory in Google storage, which uh, we'll use for get from uh, Also an important part is the timestamp columns that we use here. It's being used for uh, point in time correctness, for example, which I will describe in a moment, or just to deduplicate data that can be uh, somehow duplicated in this source. There is also date partition column, which we use for uh, optimizing our Spark jobs. So we declared both feature tables, and now uh, we can easily register them in the core. So I'm, I'm calling client.apply feature table, and that sends those uh, declaration of feature tables to the core. Now we can test that uh, those feature tables are successfully stored. As I said, Feast assumes that you already have uh, tools that populating your data warehouse or pushing data to Kafka. But for the sake of uh, this demo, I need to put some data into those uh, Google storage uh, buckets. So I will just generate uh, several data frames. And with this helper function, I will store them on the Google storage. As you can see, data has been successfully ingested into feature table batch source. We can check it by just retrieving what's in the Google storage. You can see there are a bunch of parquet files and uh, it used date column as the partitioning column. Now we can talk about actually your machine learning project. The first step in preparing the model is training. And for that, we need to generate a training data set. Important part about uh, generating data set for training is point in time correctness. As you can see on this graph, uh, when we are making a prediction, we use feature values with various timestamps. So as you can see, those features probably from different sources uh, came in different types. Thus, the prediction function usually used the latest available value. Since we want our training data set to be as close as possible to what we will have in prediction, we are making this point in time correctness uh, correction in the uh, for the training data set as well. So data scientists 
must specify this uh, line here, basically this time point. And we will we'll be doing backward search in finding the most recent feature value in relation to this time point. Let me show an example. So here, um, from the uh, several data frames that I generated, we are using uh, entities data frame to create a request for a uh, training data set. So we uh, take in a sample of those entities and add into them a random event timestamp. Right. So this is a uh, data frame which we will provide as entity source for the, our, our get historical features request. This function here, launch Spark job, which uh, can be run on the data proc, EMR, or standalone Spark cluster. Uh, the Spark job will pull the features from your batch source and combine them with the entity uh, data set which we just provided, do this uh, point in time correctness, and return you data set for training. As you can see, features from uh, two feature tables were combined on this uh, resulting uh, data set. Since I was generating those event timestamps randomly, it is possible that uh, in some point in time, values for these features haven't yet been set. Thus, we can see now here. But in general, uh, this data can be used for training your model. Now let's move to the online features. So when you train your model, you will probably go with it to production. And in production, you will do real-time prediction. So we will be using the uh, real-time online features. In order to do that, you need to have those features in the online storage. The simplest way to populate the storage is to take everything you have in your batch storage and put the latest values of each, each feature for each entity into online storage. So now we will do exactly this. We will run the offline to online ingestion, which also uh, starts a Spark job uh, which reads from the Google storage and store to Redis. When this job is completed, we can again generate some sample of entities and make a request to the online serving to retrieve features on those entities. As you can see, this is much faster because it used Redis as the backend. Now, on those feature values, you can run your production prediction. As the next step, we can also add uh, another features uh, to our production prediction, uh, namely the real-time features. So in order to do that, we need to add a streaming source as one of the sources for our, to, our, to our feature table. With, with this streaming source, we need to specify also bootstrap server and topic since uh, we're using Kafka source. Uh, and also uh, we need to specify message format, which in this example is our format. And of course we need our schema. So the ingestion job would know how to decode uh, records coming from Kafka topic. So this other schema in this example consists of feature trips today and entity driver ID and event column called data type. 
Now that we have dated feature table in core, we can start our ingestion job. As soon as job consuming specified Kafka topic, we can start to populate it. So this function uh, takes the record uh, from our trips data frame and encode it with given our schema and put it into Kafka topic. Now we should be able to retrieve those features with our get online feature method. So we generate an entity sample again and doing the quest. So you can see here that we uh, have in both uh, average daily trips uh, feature, which comes from the batch source and was ingested with uh, batch ingestion job and trips today, which comes from the streaming source and we just ingested it from Kafka in the same response. Those features are now can be used for your uh, model prediction. That is everything that I wanted to cover in this demo. Thank you for attention. You can find this notebook or other examples in our repository on GitHub. Three years ago, Uber introduced the concept of a feature store through their blog post on Michelangelo, their machine learning platform. Since then, many companies have built their own feature stores like Feast from Gojek, Airbnb, Zipline, and many others. Teams, large and small, are starting to realize how critical a feature store is in the ML stack of the future. Where is Feast now? While well, we released 0.1 late 2018, we rolled it out in Gojek, and we've gone from strength to strength. From 0.2 onwards, we've been working with our community. We developed decentralized serving. We developed point-in-time correctness. We added project isolation and, isolation and namespacing. We simplified concept and added integration points. We integrated with TFX and TFDV. We allowed for multiple VPC support and request response logging and monitoring and metrics in production. And recently, we've added Amazon support and Spark support with the help of teams like Tekton. So who are our big adopters and contributors? Well, we've been working closely with a community of large technology companies like Agoda that's delivered Cassandra support, Postmates has delivered Bigtable support, we've added, um, Simpress has added Auth, and we've been working with Microsoft and Farfetch, and they've deliver, delivered Databricks and Delta support. And recently we've been working with Tekton, um, who've contributed Spark and Amazon support. So there are over 43 contributors and six plus enterprise customers running Feast in production today at scale. Let's talk about the Feast vision for a second. So there are three aspects that we want to look at. The first is open governance and standards. So there are teams, large and small, that currently rely on Feast. They're not just running it in production, but they're also contributing code back to the project. They're collaborating with us. These teams need to know that they can rely on the project at scale, but that they can also shape the direction of the project. So we believe open governance and a transparent process is important in driving our project and encouraging further adoption. Secondly, we want to build Feast into a multi-cloud or cloud agnostic, modular and production grade feature store. Meaning if you're a team using Feast, you should be able to cherry pick the components you, you need, deploy it wherever you are running your existing machine learning stack and then run that at scale reliably. Lastly, we want to make Feast easy to integrate into existing machining tools and the ML tools of the future, meaning um, if these are machine learning platforms, upstream data transformation systems, downstream model serving, we want to have clear API contracts and clear integration points. So these are key parts of our vision, and we are already starting to work towards addressing them. So for open governance and standards, we are super excited to announce that Feast is now officially a part of the Linux Foundation, meaning that not a single company has any kind of special privilege in the project. The trademark is now part of the, the, the Linux Foundation, and we will be we are already operating on a governance structure defined by the Linux Foundation, which means it's completely neutrally governed. 
and um, this, the process and structure is completely public and transparent. There's an initial group of maintainers and a democratic process for new companies and teams to become maintainers of, of the project. Secondly, um, we believe that we need to work with the greatest minds in the industry in order to build a best-in-class feature store. And we've already worked with many of the greatest minds over the last couple of months. But one team in particular stands out there, and we're super excited to announce that Tekton will be committing a significant amount of resources towards Feast development. We believe that by joining forces with Tekton, we'll be able to build a world-class feature store that teams large and small can rely on. And together, we hope to set the standard for what a feature store is. And so we're super excited for this collaboration opportunity and all of this is happening underneath the Linux Foundation umbrella. Then finally, we'd like to announce that we are now a top-level component of Kubeflow, and this is the start of our integration journey. Kubeflow is one of the best machine learning platforms out there, completely open source. Um, so it's both the best of breed and an end-to-end -end system. And we believe that by integrating into Kubeflow and improving that integration, we'll not just um, improve the integrations of Feast with, into ML platforms, but also to sister projects like model serving or pipelining or other managed services. So our roadmap going forward. For Feast 0 0.9, we believe, um, which is currently under development, we believe that we'll be able to achieve um, cloud agnostic deployments. So we've already got Azure, sorry, we've already got Amazon Google Cloud support, and we'll be lo uh, launching Azure support as well as on-prem deployment support. We'll be adding offline storage support for Delta, and we'll be adding feature engineering support, which will likely be through Spark SQL. We will also be sending out requests for comments on on-demand feature transformations and a feature discovery user interface. Then finally, come and say hello. Our homepage is over at Feast Dev. Our source code is all online. It's completely um, open and um, Apache 2 licensed. We have a Feast channel on the Kubeflow Slack, and you can find a link to this deck on tiny URL at, on the screen right now. Thank you.